Dayton police, meanwhile, releasing surveillance footage of the deadly shooting, showing officers running towards the gunfire. And 30 seconds after the shoot shooter opened fire late Saturday night, it was all over, leaving nine people dead, including the suspect's sister. If Dayton police had not gotten to the shooter in under a minute, and think of that, 30, 26 injured, uh, nine dead, um, hun hundreds of people in the Oregon district could be dead today. We will hear more from the mayor of Dayton, Ohio, at half past the hour. But first, Mike Tobin is live at the scene of this tragedy. Mike? And Chandra, once again, you have people in a traumatized community piling up flowers, all they can do to memorialize nine lives snuffed out so senselessly and suddenly on Saturday night, Sunday morning. Meantime, Dayton police have released video that shows panicked people running from the gunfire here on Fifth Street. Ultimately, you will see the gunman clad in body armor, wearing a mask and hearing protection, shooting indiscriminately. As he attempts to enter Ned Pepper's bar, six police officers shoot him dead. Now, this morning, the Associated Press is quoting two former classmates, saying the gunman was once suspended from high school for compiling a hit list of classmates and a rape list of girls he wanted to sexually assault. Meantime, the police chief says there was nothing in the gunman's past that would have prevented him from legally purchasing the AR-15 and 100-round drum magazines used in this massacre. Let me say there's nothing in this individual's uh, history or record that would have precluded him from purchasing that firearm. Is that magazine is illegal? That uh, hundred round magazine? There is no in indication that that is illegal at this time. Now, police say the gunman drove to Dayton with his sister and an acquaintance in their parents' gray Toyota Corolla. That sister was one of the first people killed in this massacre. And I just spoke with Ohio Congressman and presidential hopeful Tim Ryan. He is calling for a ban on assault weapons and tougher background checks, noting that the public sentiment is very high and the National Rifle Association is in a state of turmoil. He says maybe this is the time that gun control advocates can put a knife in the heart of the NRA. Sandra, back to you. Mike Tobin, thank you.